Hello, hi, welcome to the Glowing Skin Series. I'm Christine Ho, and today I have Angela Warburton. She practices and works to educate about traditional Chinese medicine, which is also called TCM. So, hello, welcome, hi. and thank you for being here. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Yes, so tell us about your own personal story. Um, my own personal story, yeah, well, Chinese medicine wasn't something I ever thought about getting into, and um, I always had an interest in health. Uh, throughout my whole life, I was always interested, curious about people, curious about wellness. I studied psychology when I went to university, and I knew the power of the mind was really important, but that it was one aspect, and I went right after that to study Western nutrition and dietetics. Um, I love food. I love the idea of it, using food to heal, but we were very, it was a very narrow focus, and it just didn't, it sort of had the same diet for everyone, and it just didn't make sense to me. So after that, I took a bit of a break, and I went to work, um, actually worked in, in media for a bit doing, it was health related, and I was researching all these different things, but it wasn't, it was when I had, um, I've been training for a marathon, so running for like two hours at a time. And um, I went out one day and I couldn't run down the block. I had this asthma that came out of nowhere and it, it was paralyzing. So I went to my, my family doctor and she did the best she could, but she said, you have asthma and um, here's an inhaler and off you go. And I thought, you know, I don't go from running for such a long time to not being able to run. There's got to be a reason. And it's not just that I have to live with this. So I was doing my own research. And at that time, someone close to me had died two days before this, um, this asthma came on. So I thought there was something related. So someone um, that I worked with suggested I go see this Chinese medicine doctor. And it was the most profound thing for me. It, um, the moment I got in there, the Chinese medicine, we look at the lung system having to do with grief and sadness, often tra trauma or shock can affect that system. So it just made sense. And as soon as, soon as I was in there, I'm like, oh, this, this is what I want to do. So I researched it. And the way that what I ended up loving about it was that that it, um, it looks at, at the whole person. So it looks at everything as being relevant to the health. It looks at our genetics. It looks at our lifestyle. It looks at diet. Um, so for me to go from this loving food and like the nutrition side, but not feeling we could customize it to, we can get so specific about diet around the individual. So it was just like all these little light bulbs were going off and I just felt found my home. So since then um, I've been working, I went to I studied, I've studied a bit in China and um, it's been, it's a, it's one of those careers where I love what I do. It's, I practice it, It's sort of my life is my work in so, so many ways too. So it's been a, it's been a quite a journey for me, but I, I love it. So that's kind of where I got here or how oh, I got here. Yeah, that sounds amazing and sweet. Yeah, so um, how does TCM relate to skincare? Well, just as I mentioned, this whole idea of the body as this ecosystem, um, you know, skincare or having healthy skin is really, um, it's, it's, it's a sign of our internal health. So basically, um, if we're healthy inside, if our, all our systems are in balance, we're going to healthy, vibrant skin is going to be a part of that system. So when we're off balance, um, it's going to show up in many different ways. So skin is many ways, is one of the ways that it's going to show up. So um, when we're looking at, at skin in particular, we look very specifically at what type of skin issue it is. Is it red and inflamed? Is it like deep and cystic? Is it a rash that comes up? What part of the body does it come on? When does it come up? Um, what are the triggers for it? So we are always looking for, I mean, most people think what happened? Why would this, you know, why do I have this? And I didn't have it yesterday or it's ongoing, but often we have to look at the whole system um, over a long period of time to know what's out of balance. And we always say your body's talking all the time, so it's just figuring out what it's saying. So um, skin is one way. We say that we look for the luster of the skin, the color. So as like, do we have... Um, you know, vibrant, sort of a, a bright, vibrant complexion, or is it dull and pale, or is it too red? Um, so, you know, all those things are going to show us how we're in our off of balance. Um, so, yeah. So, what are you most proud of from 2017? Oh, 2017. It was an interesting year. It's funny. For so many people, it was a really interesting year. For me, um, it really pushed me sort of to go beyond what I would, I'm maybe comfortable with. I, uh, I think often as people, we underestimate what we're capable of or we hold ourselves back because of fear of doing it wrong or not being enough or smart enough or knowing enough or whatever it is. Um, and so this last year, it was challenging in many ways, but it pushed me to um, make leaps into things that I was um, maybe holding back on. And, and, and uh, it just showed me what I was capable of. So, um, you know, there's always lots to learn, but I just sort of took some, 
some a little bit more um i took some leaps in things um and it felt really good so challenging but ultimately really really rewarding oh that's great so, yeah and what are you most excited about for 2018 2018. Um, I think it's to continue on this this path of putting more out there. I'm really starting to do or want to do more online courses. I have some projects that have been in the work um, for a long time. I have a, a partner, a chef that I partner with, and so we're gonna we're starting to put more out there. So just is starting to really, um, yeah, put some more more uh, content out there and just face. I think it's it's really about coming up against you know stretching that part where it's like something I want to do but maybe it's a little scary and so this is the year of really putting facing that and putting that out there even more. Okay, yeah. So you also mentioned that TCM can identify and treat seemingly mild symptoms at an early stage. So tell us about that. Yeah, so Chinese medicine at its root is um, amazing preventative medicine. So really Chinese medicine, um, as I said before, your body's talking all the time. So we want to catch it when it's talking and not when it's screaming. So little symptoms are talking, disease is screaming. So, um, and it's like the, you know, when people say, I don't feel right, something's wrong, but um, all my blood tests are normal or everything's coming back normal in tests. And so that's where these like sort of little signs um, that when you know yourself, that's when we can really help. So Chinese medicine looks at the body um, as, as a sort of sense of balance all the time. So um, when we're healthy, we're pain-free, we sleep well. For women, their menstrual cycles are really, um, like, you know, they come on time, they shouldn't be painful, you know, all these things. Um, and so our body's just going to be having this really healthy balance. So when we're off balance, it's going to show up in lots of different ways. So um, we have these systems in the body, nothing stands alone. So um, a lot of times people have, various symptoms they say oh my gosh my eyes are itchy i've got you know um pms i get these tension headaches here um i have sort of ibs they're all part of the same pattern so what we're trying to do always is identify the root pattern of what's going on and then balance it out from there so we use acupuncture we use herbal medicine those are, are two big things people know chinese medicine for but food we always say food first herb second food is our primary way of, of addressing disharmony in the body or that and also lifestyle so we want to look at um, you know, when someone comes in, it's not, it's like how, what's been going on in their life? Have there been emotional things going on? How are they eating? What are their sleep patterns? Um, environment too, because a lot of times people, their health will change according to the season. So it's making changes um, and in our diet and our lifestyle to according to what's going on. And I think one of the challenges in, in our modern culture is that we do the same thing year round. We can get the same, we can get great food um, from, you know, we can have bananas whenever we want. We can have, you know, all these different things. Um, so, and we also usually are living in the same way. We get up at the same time, we push ourselves, we, you know, to, to ex expend the same amount of energy all the time as opposed to listening to what our body needs so there's a time when we should rest more there's a time when we need to you know we have more energy so we can be more active so it's it's really listening um and balancing um according to our body and so um you know these there's so many great uh, there's so much great information about the perfect diet and eat these things, but if, unless we're tailoring it to our body, we're still, we still might not have that balance that we're seeking. So, um, so yeah, when someone comes in to see me, I'll ask them questions and everything's relevant. Everything, like quite literally, do you have dry eyes? Do you get hangnails? You know, do you get um, thirsty at a certain time of the day? Whatever it is, all these things are symptoms and everything's going to paint a picture of what's going on in the body. So that's where we use it. Um, and again, that idea of prevention. So preventing anything from getting um, way off balance or even preventing these little signs and symptoms from coming. We often use Chinese medicine kind of like the way we change the oil in the car. You know, we'd say you don't change it when you have a problem with the oil, you change it before that. So that's kind of how we use, we use the medicine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So what are some Chinese medicine signs and symptoms for wellness and pre prevention? Um, so I get like it's usually the individuals. We want to pay attention um, to things. So if, if, you know, 
uh, sleep, for instance. So we want to be able to sleep well. We should fall asleep easily, sleep through the night, um, wake up feeling refreshed. So if we're waking up um, in the middle of the night at a certain time, that's the sign that a certain system's off balance. If we're waking up to pee, that's another sign. If we wake up to pee and have trouble falling back to sleep, that's another sign. So it, they're all slightly different. So it's not just, you know, if someone has trouble falling asleep, it's not just fraud, like stroke of insomnia or whatever. Um, Digestion is a huge one. So um, we want to make sure the whole thing from having an appetite to how we feel after we eat to elimination, all of that is part of a balanced system and, and really absorption of nutrients is one of the key things. So um, for prevention or for wellness, we want to make sure that we have a really strong, great digestive tract. Um, so if someone's feeling a lack of appetite, they get bloated after they eat all the time. If they're um, feeling they get acid reflux, if they're constipated or they have loose bowels or the IBS, all that's a sign of imbalance in the body. Um, and then for women, menstrual cycles, um, how they feel. I mean, a lot of things are very common now. So um, a lot of women have PMS or painful periods, but that's not no normal in the sense of that, sh there's so, that doesn't have to be how they feel. So if someone's getting bad PMS or breast tenderness or irritability before their period, um, that's a sign of one system. We'd say it's more of a stuck pattern in the body. Things aren't moving well. If someone's getting very painful periods, um, we look at how, um, you know, first different, again, the idea of everything, everyone's unique. Um, you know, if, if someone's got painful periods, do they feel better with heat or do they feel better with movement or pressure or something like that? All those are going to be a sign of how the body's on, you know, in our are out of balance. Um, we look at energy levels. So if someone's getting tired at the same time every day, that's a sign, um, you know, 3 p.m. usually is around 3 to 3 to 7 p.m. That's usually an adrenal health time. So if someone's getting tired there, it's different, you know, if someone wakes up and they're exhausted and they can't get going. So, um, you know, those are, those are things that we look at for, for health. Um, also circulation in the body. So how do we feel? How do our muscles feel? Are we, if we're getting headaches or pain, are they always in the same spot? So, um, you know, if people get frontal headaches, if they get occipital headaches, all that, that's a different pattern. So then we're going to treat it very differently. Um, same with skin. So because we're talking, you know, healthy skin, um, we're going to look at um, where someone's got the skin issue. So for, you know, is it chin, you know, hormonal for women, like women around their periods that get worse? Is it, you know, on the back, on the front? Do they get rashes? Where are they on the arms and legs? Um, and so we look at the characteristics of them. So we break everything down into, again, this idea of balance. It's very logical, Chinese medicine. Um, you know, we, we, uh, a lot of times when people hear about it, they, they're like, oh, that, well, that makes sense. But somehow we've sort of distanced ourselves from the logic and the listening to our body from that state of balance. So if something's too hot, we want to cool it. If something's too cold, we want to warm it. If something's stuck and stagnant, we want to move it. If something's really um, too, we call it, we say phlegm or dampness, but it's usually like a... Um, you know, something that's uh, maybe like cystic acne or someone who's always congested all the time, there's too much sort of fluid or, or mucus in the body, then we want to dry that. So it's really, it's really quite logical. So when we're looking at skin, for instance, we say, is it, you know, um, a skin condition that's really red looking, very sort of an angry red? Well, that would be a heat condition. If it's not really red, if it's kind of pale, um, it might be sort of more cold or someone who has a very pale face and they don't have a lot of color in their cheeks, that might be more of a cold pattern where someone who's like red all over, um, red eyes, that kind of stuff, that would be more heat in the body. Um, if something, so like cystic acne or some stuff that's more, um, there's more pus or something like that, then that would be more of a damp or phlegmy kind of condition. So, so that's where we sort of, we're looking for the body to tell us where it's off balance. Um, and then when we seek to treat, then we're going to use specific foods or herbs that are going to work to balance. So warming herbs to, to add heat where there's cool, cooling herbs to cool down that, that way. That sort of went off, but that, did that answer your question? Oh, well, I think so, yes. Okay. It was just one of those, you know, many questions you wanted to ask, you know, not just for me, but mostly for the audience, really, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the kind of thing, there's so much information, and it's just when we start to listen to the, I mean, that's why I always try and encourage people to listen to their body. So I'm always, um, you know, I'm g gone in the days sort of of the top-down expert telling you about your body, because nobody knows their body as well as, the, like, I know my body best, you know your body best. So it's like, trusting that and then 
um, I'm like sort of a partner for someone to work through their health stuff. And so um, when we work together and I'm always like trying to teach them, this is what this means. And here are some choices you can make that are going to help balance it. And here are things that are going to make it worse. So then we're empowered and then we can make better choices for ourselves. And then we can understand what, um, you know, what our body's saying and then, and then adapt because it's like, we're not static. We're never static. We're always changing. Um, life is always changing. Sometimes we've got more work. Sometimes we're more stressed. Sometimes we're, we're rested and we feel great. Um, sometimes right now here it's winter. So it's like freezing. We just had a snowstorm and all that. So I'm cooking a lot of warm food. Um, you know, and a lot of times people will do, you know, I mentioned doing the same thing year round. And so if they're having smoothies or salads or something, and it's like minus 10 out here, that doesn't feel as good as it feels when it's like 29 degrees or whatever in the summer is super hot. And so, um, so it's just like listening that way to our, to our body. Okay. Yeah. So, um, how do you recommend people also use TCM for diet? So the, um, yeah, diet is the pillar of one of the pillars and I'm so passionate. I think my background and I love food, I <laughs> think it's delicious. Um, and so, when I have the, I work with a chef and we say, you know, medicine can taste great. And so if we use food as medicine, um, it can, it can, A, it can feel wonderful, but B, it just keeps us super strong and healthy. So um, our digestive tract, um, and this has a lot to do with our skin too. Um, we, that's where basically everything that we need to, to live and to, to thrive um, comes from our food. That's the way that nature feeds us. So all the minerals, all the vitamins, all the things that come through our food. So one of the keys that we want to make sure is that we actually absorb what we put in. So um, that's why we like, basically, we look at the digestive system like a pot and a fire. So everything that you put in, your stomach has to warm it above body temperature for the digestive enzymes to, to kick in and then break it down into a soupy medium. And then that's going to allow your small intestine to absorb all the nutrients. So if we're um, putting in things and the body can't actually break it down. So sometimes it's like if someone's cold all the time and they're eating frozen drink, they're having, you know, having frozen drinks or eating really raw, like raw food. It's essentially like you're having a soup and you keep putting blocks of ice in it. It's never going to actually cook the same way. So those people won't actually be absorbing their nutrients. So they're not getting, you know, the skin's not getting what it needs to to be healthy. The, the muscles aren't getting what they need to be healthy in that way. So we want to make sure that um, that system's working well. So we want to put in ideally warm cooked foods, particularly in the winter or first thing in the morning, it kind of stokes things up. And then, um, you know, whole foods are key. So um, we say food in its most natural state. There are so many, we can take you know, vitamins and things like that. But there are so many micronutrients, we don't even know what's there. And um, I mean, there's this whole, there's all the work being done now on the, um, you know, the gut biome. So like all the micro um, bacteria, all the organisms and things that are in that, that help keep it strong too. So um, we want to eat whole food, ideally um, farm fresh, local produce if we can, because that gives us what, the, you know, sort of the um, minerals and things from where we are living. That's kind of ideal. We're big on that in Chinese medicine um, and making sure everything's moving out. So when things aren't, when bowels aren't flowing or things aren't moving, that's when we get toxic buildup. That's when we get inflammation in the body and all of that. So it's about putting in the good food, making sure we're digest digesting, digesting and absorbing it and making sure we're eliminating. And that's huge. And so the food, what we want is... Um, you know, if you're healthy and want to stay healthy, it's a mix. So we always say eat a rainbow, whole, full fresh food, organic grass fed meat, if you do meat, um, and uh, just a diverse diet and that will help and adjusting to the seasons that will help keep you nice and healthy and strong. If you have an imbalance, so that's where we talk about, you know, war, you know, hot or cold or dry or, or stuck. Um, so if someone's feeling for instance, that sort of stuck pattern would be like PMS, um, shoulder tension, headaches, irritability. The, the person who's like <sighs> sighing all the time, that's actually a sign of like, that's how specific we get in Chinese medicine, but that's a sign of stuck. The body's kind of stuck. So then we want to add foods in that are going to help move or, and um, transform the energy. If someone's really hot, then we want to be avoiding hot foods. So for instance, um, a lot of this is intuitive. People would know, but we think of foods, food as having not only nutritional value, but also properties. So 
um, ginger, naturally warm, pepper, like naturally warming, a lot of the, um, you know, cinnamon, those kind of things, they're, they're naturally warm in property. So if you're healthy and it's the winter, those are great foods to add in. If you're hot all the time, um, that would be not so great to have these really warming foods because they're going to send your body more off balance. Um, like there's uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, um, a lot of the, the foods that are grown in the summer, they tend to be naturally cooling and moistening, which is like this nature's way of balancing us out. Like if it's hot outside, the foods that are grown tend to be cool, then that sort of is at balance. So in the summertime, that's why, you know, watermelon, it's so amazing. It tastes great and it's su super um, refreshing and cooling because it's hot and that food is cooling and it helps to balance us out. If we have that in the winter, actually I met a, a chef and he was um doing these expeditions in the arctic and he was allowed to bring in whatever food he wanted and so he flew up watermelon to the arctic for people to eat there and i was talking to him about this this idea of like the um you know the properties of food and he's like oh that's really interesting because when i ate it i didn't feel that great but when i had the local cuisine which was seal meat he said i could feel like i ate and all of a sudden there was this ball of fire and, and warmth in my stomach and it spread out to my whole body and so it's a lot of time traditional cuisines or what's grown and are eaten or the, the um, uh, you know, in around where we are, that's going to provide what we need for balance. So I think I always um, tell people to listen to how you're, you feel after you eat something. If you feel terrible, well, that's probably because there's something in that that's not working for your body. It doesn't mean the food's bad um, because it can, that's what people often compare to other people. They're like, oh, it works for my friend or they, they look great and they feel great and they're having raw food and I have it but I don't feel that way. And it could be that they're very cold and the other person is very hot. So the other person feels great because it's balancing them out. Um, so yeah, so we're always going to look for these foods that are going to help to balance. So stuck food, things that are, you know, are people who are really stuck or irritable or stressed out should have foods that like, um, you know, sprouted foods are great for them. Things like, um, citrus peel like if you have teas with like an orange peel or something like that um that tends to be great vinegars are really great for moving the energy um it would make might make a lot of sense but like fried food overly sticky or sweet food they tend to stagnate they make people feel worse they also um you know for anyone who has an inflammatory kind of skin condition that's going to make it worse too i mean most people they'll know that but sometimes we we forget in that way so um so yeah for diet it's really about customizing what's going on um the food for what's going on in the individual and um then we just use food as medicine in that way Okay, yeah, that is very, very unique and very good advice. So also, um, how can we also use TCM for healthy aging? Healthy aging, yes. Um, I, I love, there's just, uh, my mom actually just turned, she's almost 80 and she just looks fabulous. She looks better and better. And so I look at so what she's done and just the uh, sort of, you know, inspirational people that are aging really well. Um, I think when we listen again to our body to balance it, um, food, huge, huge, huge. Like I think that whole food diet, really important. The other thing I, I, that tends to be lacking from our diet is the collagen um, rich foods. So traditionally things like bone broth that are cooked with a mix of different bones and things provide the collagen. The, the collagen is basically, it's present in every cell. It's the way our cells communicate. Um, the fascial lines, I don't know, that's how we use acupuncture, but fascia covers everything in the body. Um, sometimes when fascia gets stuck, that's, you know, wrinkles or stiffness or things like that. Um, so collagen rich foods really help keep the skin sort of plump and moist and good and, and, and all the connective tissue really um, uh, supple, I guess, if you will. And um, so that's really important. Um, also, uh, so we say pillars of health, you know, diet, exercise and good mental health and uh, emotional health. So um, some of the best things, uh, making sure you're active. So it, I think a lot of times people will go think that to be active or work out needs to be this hardcore gym workout or doing something intense. But um, things that are great on the joints and also good for the lungs and all that. Walking is fantastic. Hiking, being in nature, um, any kind of stretching too. So sort of yoga, Tai Chi is amazing, that kind of stuff. So that that will um, allow us to have mobility through, through our life. Um, 
also joy and laughter. Like I think that uh, joy and laughter is so important. I, I mean, there's so many studies now that show when we laugh, it actually changes our cells. It changes us. Um, it's, we can't be stressed and happy, you know, at the same time. And we, our cells only regenerate when we're in that parasympathetic nervous system. Um, when that's engaged and when we're in the sympathetic fight or flight, we're just in survival. So little things that we can do to switch our body um, into that relaxed state so our stress hormones aren't all on all the time. So meditation, laughter, joy, um, walking, nothing to do. Like the, the moderate exercise is really great for longevity for our joints and that as well. Um, yeah, and then I think the eating all the sort of the whole foods and all that. And when um, I think that for healthy aging to be vibrant, have um, lots of energy and look good too, to catch your body when it's off of balance, just like when it's talking. So if you're getting wait, not waiting for something to get way off balance, but kind of keep um, keeping an eye when it's, uh, you know, we say, um, you know, that idea of uh, the, there's a saying that the best doctors have no patience because we've taught everyone to be really well. Um, so it's not like a disease based system. It's a wellness based system. And actually practitioners were only paid when their, their patients were healthy and they weren't paid when they were sick in sort of in China. So, it's like keep to age well, to have a nice, long, healthy life, keep on top of the little things. Um, listen to your body, eat well, change your diet when you need to, always keep active. And I think those are some of the best things you can do for healthy aging. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's amazing and pretty good advice. And yeah, that is one of those things that, you know, when you think about, because I haven't heard that saying in a long time, but that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> I have no patience. That's definitely true. Yeah, because we want, you know, one wants to go to the doctor. So it's like, if we keep ourselves healthy, we like, we will like, we'll stay, you know, stay healthy and listen and use, you know, I always look at um, the best healthcare now as a team of people. So use, I have certain skills, but I work with a, in an integrative space where we will, sh like, there's some stuff I, I don't do or can't do. So I'll refer out. Um, I love Western medicine for certain things. And so that's great for certain things, but um, I'll, you know, I'll refer to, you know, so use, use us as a team. And then I just, the, the best stuff, the best thing is to know thyself. And so know what you need, know when things are off balance and when we need to sort of correct, of course, correct and get back on. Okay. Yeah. And so what are some, also some TCM recommendations you have for healthy skin? Healthy skin. So, um, I think, you know, all the foundations of what I just talked about. So, you know, trying to listen to your body, eat well, um, really food is going to express through the, when we eat a, a, a healthy, varied diet, it's going to express through our skin. Um, you know, avoiding certain things, uh, you know, the usual culprits like deep fried foods, uh, dairy can be a bit congesting for some people. So listening to that, uh, refined sugar, um, hot or spicy things, too much of it can cause, cause too much heat. We'd say that um, hot, spicy, pungent foods tend to go up and out through the body. They, they create, so people who have really red skin or they get really red after they eat to really watch the spicy foods um, and the inflammation in the body. Um, and uh, I, th I think the collagen is really important. So the bone broth, that kind of stuff can be really helpful um, for women. If it's hormonally based work, you know, find a practitioner to help work on the hormones because that's easy to balance. It's always skin conditions are always an internal then, you know, they're going to manifest on the outside, but it's not so much topically what we put on our skin. Well, there's, you know, it's important what we put on our skin, but it's always a sign of a deeper imbalance inside. So um, if you're having chronic skin issues, seek out care from someone to find out what it is. If you're just able to notice, you know, if it's red, if it's hot, um, that's going to be heat. If it's, uh, you know, if you're really pale or if it's, um, if you, it's a, um, you've got more sort of steep cystic sap, that tends to be what we call a dampness. So I've got a bunch of articles on my site that try to ex explain these patterns to people and some foods and things like that to help. Um, exercise really important to help our body rid itself of toxins. So it doesn't, that's another way the body will detoxify through the skin. So if we have a buildup, it's oft, often going to come out that way as well. Um, and um, yeah, honestly, I think joy and laughter shows up in skin really, really important too, not to, to make light of it, but, um, but it's really, um, it can be very specific to what's going on. But for women, I was going to say too, hormonally balancing um, really important. So herbs 
acupuncture work incredibly well for that as, as does diet as well. Okay. Yeah, that is great. And definitely good information for everyone to learn. So, yes. Um, what are some signs and symptoms that you would say um, a person would need to go see a TCM doctor? Well, basically anything, as I said before, prevention is the best, the best medicine. So um, I often recommend people go before they have any symptoms. So much the way people might go for a relaxing massage or something like that, if they just want to feel good and keep and, you know, balance their health. Um, people come in, I can't believe like, I can't, so many people who maybe even were afraid of needles are like, I can't believe I'm so excited to come in and get acupuncture. It's incredibly relaxing and it helps your body sort of drop into that relaxed state. Um, so I say people, you know, if they want to come in for prevention based, come in, you know, seasonally, like transition of seasons is really good. Um, quarterly, if they notice anything off balance, um, just even little like, oh, my sleep's a little off or, oh, this is a busy time for me with stress. I think I'm going to go in either during that time or just before to help, you know, sort of support the body through that. If you're noticing anything, um, you know, off balance, digestive leads off or anything like that. Um, in women, if they're having any hormonal issues as far as um, cycle, you know, regular cycles or painful periods, that's a great time to come in. So really, if there's no bad time. Um, it's, it's something that, um, because of the way that we use or we diagnose things and because of the way we look at the body, um, there's always, there's always ways to um, balance out what's going on. So we're always going to be able to tell you um, little signs, what they mean and uh, educate you on how to prevent uh, disease or any kind of ailment yourself as well. Okay, yeah. So you also mentioned that you use a mix of TCM and Western medicine. So explain to us how you combine the two to treat a person. So I, I always studied Western nutrition and dietetics. So that's my health science background and that. Um, so I pull, I mean, I'm always learning and researching too. So I'm pulling from, you know, um, how Chinese medicine looks at food, but also what we know about, um, you know, how things have progressed and how, what we know about the digestive system or the foods and the nutrients in it. So I pull together that. I also, um, I'm constantly studying and learning. So I have a uh, applied mindfulness and meditation um, certificate as well. I do cranial sacral therapy. I, do, I pull in a lot of different, different modalities, um, depending what's going on. So um, I just pull from whatever someone needs when they're coming to see me. And um, yeah, so that's usually the nutrition where I pull a bit from the, the, those two. Okay, yeah. So tell us also about your free gift. Well, um, because I'm so passionate about the, well, and I just think the healthy digestion is so important. Um, I've got a, an ebook that people can pull. It's just a little one that explains, goes into a little bit more detail about everything that I talked about. And um, if anyone's interested in more of the um, nutrition side of things, I will be doing a uh, a course, an e-course on that. So if they, if anyone wants more information or to sign up for that, I'm offering 20% off to anyone who's, uh, who's on this webinar. So yes, that's about all the time we have. So thank you so much, Angela Warburton, for being here. Thank you so much. It was fun. Happy to be here.